Hello, I'm William with the Gardeners, and today I'm in Brooklyn, actually right by Red Hook Terminal. Not the place where you think about a lot of gardens, but people in cities want to grow food, flowers, and herbs just like everyone else. And that's why community gardens are so popular. Let's go check out what. How you doing? I'm hey. William. Hey William, Lenny Labrizzi, nice to meet you. Nice Actually, meet you. we did meet about two years ago. You came to New York to the Green Thumb Grow Together. Oh, you're right! And I told you that you had to do a piece about rainwater harvesting, and you're here today oh. to do that, aren't you? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So tell me a little bit about your system, Lenny. We help the gardens to conserve water, and okay, a great way huge. to do that is to collect rainwater. So we've attached piping to the roof that's right behind us here. Right. And those pipes funnel the water into four barrels right down here that are connected together. I see how you have them tucked. You have each of the barrels kind of tucked towards the back of the fence here. We came up with this, this plan here to use these four smaller recycled um, olive barrels. So you're repurposing too? We're repurposing as All well. All right. And then right over here is the spigot. They can drain it right from over there. What was cool about your system is you're using gravity so that, that there's no power. No electricity had to be used. You had to bring in like a generator or anything. Right. Really, all you do is let gravity supply the force to get the water out the spigot. We try to do like no moving parts. The only moving part is the spigot, that valve that turns on. And you on move that, so that, that's just, that's just right. hand power. There's a little right. bit of maintenance that has to be done. You've got to turn the system on in the spring and turn it off in the fall. Real simple, basic maintenance. We have somewhere between five and 600 gardens in the city. We have about 90 of them in New York City community gardens. Let me turn it off. Okay. Lenny, I love how they've divided this up. So you were telling me this is two plots? We have a little bit of a, of a space problem here. We don't sure. have a lot of area where we can give people 10 by 20 plots. Right, right. A new gardener, gardener that comes in right. will get a half a plot to start with. You know, sometimes people are very gung-ho at the beginning of the season and then... And then summertime hits. Summertime hits and they may not follow through. <laughs> right. But people who do follow through, you'll know that they're really serious and dedicated. And then maybe they'll get a larger area. You're giving them a trial run first. Yes. Let them get a chance to go through it. And if they make it through all the uh, heat right. and the bugs of summer, and, and, and starting to fall in love with it, right. you know you got a dedicated gardener who will be here year after year. They pass boot camp, Th exactly. then they're ready for, to be in the, the gardening army. Community will. gardening boot camp, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And I think this is also cool. I was looking over at how people were putting together, they got their trellises to give them a little vertical space, because if you don't have a lot of ground space, you got to figure another strategy. And so it looks like they have built in some trellises and put in some cages so they can get some of their squash and things growing up. Yes, and, and people will use anything as a planter. As you, as you can see, they're using old milk containers and let juice me, containers. Let me see this container here. Yeah. Now, I think this is, this is the epitome of sustainability. To do something like this where you, where you reuse a product that was going to go into the landfill. Right. So to, to be able to figure a way to keep this and use this container to grow in, that's fabulous. It's very hard to quantify how much the gardens really save, but there's a lot that's going on here in terms of saving water, right. um, you know, saving energy, uh, and saving space, all that stuff. And then, uh, and, then, and then how about also, you know, in a city, saving sanity. Yeah. I mean, just, just to be able to come to a place that's peaceful, something that's community driven, right. a place where you feel not only secure, but you feel surrounded by life. Yes, so exactly. it's, it's, a, it's an oasis of, of a little bit of peacefulness in, in an otherwise bustling, busy city. Okay, great, let's go look at some other stuff. Okay. So Lenny, I love the ornamental aspect too. You got gardeners here who seem to love flowers as much as food. It, we're gardening for the soul as well as for the body here. And, right. and we have some amazing uh, horticulturalists in these community gardens. You, you have horticulturalists just hiding in your neighborhood. They're ready to come out to the garden. It's nice to see the, to see the color in with a lot of the vegetables. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's cool. Let's look over at the herbs too. Well, you guys have herbs everywhere, but this seems to be like the, the central location for them. Well, and this is the time when all three of these major herbs that you see right here are flowering, the yeah. lavender, the sage, and Beautiful. the rue. 
Um, so it really makes a nice combination. Now, people are familiar, of course, with sage and lavender, but I've never seen a rue this big. Yeah, it grows very well here in New York City. In <laughs> fact, there's a little bit of magic attached to the rue plant in uh -huh. the Puerto Rican culture. They think it's more powerful as an, as an herb, as a medicinal, right. if you steal a piece of it to use it for, <laughs> really? your, for your, your cure. Really? Yeah. Well, I've got a guayabera that makes me part Puerto Rican, right? So uh -huh. let, me, let me just grab one. <laughs> <laughs> Tuck this in my pocket. All right. You're safe for the day. <laughs> Thanks for the tour, lady. I appreciate it. You're welcome.